people that drink and they have enjoyment with them. If you have a particular social habits, you find yourself gravitating toward those people that have the same thing. You have because you share the same rhythm. Jesus, when he looked at them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. He did not abolish the priesthood. He said, it's very significant. He said, to be part of the community of faith, you have to go through the, the blessings and the authorization and the verification and the cleansing process of the priesthood. And they went. They understood. Remember, most of them are Jews. So they understood the law. They know what it takes when you violate the law, you're excommunicated from the community of the faith. And in order to be reconciled, you have to come through, like what we have today, confession. Confession re reconciles us back to the church and back to God and the community of the faith. Unfortunately, the minute they headed toward the temple or the synagogue in that little village to see themselves to the priest, the healing process began to take place in them. You can't help but see it on your hands. The discoloration begins to disappear and your skin began to look normal and they couldn't help but see in each other's healing, Christ's healing in them and for them. But only one of them turned around and came back and gave the glory to God. And what was so unique about it? The man that came back was a Xenos, a foreign stranger. The one that probably doesn't have a good social standing. He came and he said, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And Jesus said, Where is the other nine? Where is the other nine? Most of us have been here by God here, and that's why you're here. And sometimes God heals us and redeems our illnesses and our diseases and our shortcomings and our failures. <coughs> And we rarely come back to him and say, and say to him, thank you. Thank you. You made a big difference in my life and in my heart. Sometimes we are like the nine that never come back and say thanks. But there is something very unique about the man that came back. And I think we all need to have the same characteristics in that man. And that is humility. Arrogant people don't come back. You hear me? Those who feel, I deserve it. You know, you helped me out, but I deserve it, you know. You mistreated me so long, you ignored all my prayers for so long, and now you, 
you, you come through for me with one prayer and you want me to come back and make a big hoopla about it? A Samaritan heart and mind says, I really don't deserve to be healed. And he showed compassion and mercy upon me. So many of us don't get healed because sometimes our hearts are hardened. Our hearts are hardened by the world and the way we think and the way we think that we deserve everything and God owes us to do things for us. Uh, I think the way to God is a very simple way. And as you see us beginning to move toward Lent, preparation for that incredible journey. And in, in Lent, the first thing that's going to happen, and the first thing that we need to begin, is learn how to be humble and feel, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. Those who are humble can learn. Those who are arrogant, you can't teach them. Because they know it all. But if you have the mindset of a Samaritan, it is the same mindset that what the mindset that was in the public, in the center, the third icon as you enter into the temple, the one who said, I'm not worthy. A good Jew would have said, hey, thank you, I got it all. I have it all. A Samaritan says, I, did the, I, des I don't deserve anything. The way into being blessed as the people of God when we retain our attitude and our mindset that we are unworthy. That we continue to even eternity say, I will settle for the crumbs that you give me instead of demanding the entire loaf. There is no other way into God other than humility and being thankful and gracious for 